rescue my life. You have rescued my life. And we thank you, God. see your testimonies. We see your testimonies. We see how good God has been to you. To him be all the glory. To him be all the glory. We don't want to hold you too long. We want to jump right into the word. I'll be preaching from 1 Samuel chapter 3 today. 1 Samuel chapter 3. I'll be reading from the English Standard Version. Go ahead and open up your phones, your iPads. Grab your Bible off the shelf. Know you in the house. Cuddle up on the couch. Lay it on the dining table. Wherever you are, grab the word. Take a walk with us. First Samuel chapter 3. And the word of God reads from the English Standard Version. Now the boy Samuel was ministering to the Lord in the presence of Eli. And the word of the Lord was rare. In those days, there was no frequent vision. At that time, Eli, whose eyesight had begun to grow dim so that he could not see, was lying down in his own place. The lamp of God had not yet gone out. And Samuel was lying down in the temple of the Lord where the ark of God was. Then the Lord God called Samuel and he said, here I am. And ran to Eli and said, here I am, for you called me. But Eli said, I did not call. Lie down again. So he went and lay down. And the Lord called again, Samuel. Samuel arose and went to Eli and said, here I am. For you called me. But he said, I, I did not call, my son. Lie down again. Now Samuel did not yet know the Lord. And the word of the Lord had not yet been revealed to him. And the Lord called Samuel again the third time, and he arose and went to Eli, and Eli said, and Samuel said, here I am, for you called me. Then Eli perceived that the Lord was calling the boy. Therefore, Eli said to Samuel, go lie down, and if he calls you, you shall say, speak, Lord, for your servant hears. So Samuel went and lay down in his place. And the Lord came and stood, calling as at other times, Samuel, Samuel. And Samuel said, speak, for your servant hears. Heavenly Father, word our mouth, direct our hearts, direct our minds to be focused on you. Let these words transfer and translate through this broadcast. That anyone seeing it, anyone viewing it, anyone sharing it shall be blessed, shall be comforted by the Holy Spirit, shall be directed and guided through and by your word. Draw us closer to you through the preachment of this word. Draw us closer to your will through the preachment of this word. We pray that you have your will and your way in us today. Let no flesh gain glory. In the name of Jesus we pray. Amen. 
man, I wanna I wanna talk really quickly from the subject disrupted. Disrupted. It's an interesting, interesting topic because across the globe we're in a place where normalcy has been disrupted. Parents have gone, millions of parents across across our country have gone from working full-time jobs to now working a job and being a full-time teacher to their children. Their normalcy has been disrupted. Kids are used to going to daycare, grade school, and going to see their friends, and now they're joining online through a Zoom room because what was once regular to them it's been disrupted. There are people who are struggling with suicidal ideations and with the idea of taking their own lives because their whole portfolio has been destroyed because the market has plummeted. What's been normal for our economy is now disrupted. Went to a home going or funeral service just a few weeks ago and it felt weird not to be able to walk up to the widow of the deceased or to the children of the deceased and put my arm around them through social distancing because what was once normal is now disrupted. I made a mistake earlier and I went to get some lunch from somewhere and I walked through the door and they said, sir, you gotta step out. I said, step out. He said, it's more than four people in here. I found myself outside of the door with my shopping norms disrupted. Our country, our mindset, our mindset, our emotions are all over the place because we're disrupted. Police officers, firefighters, they're going to work every day wondering if they're going to make it back home. Not, not because they're going to fight a fire. Not because they might get in a shootout, but because they don't know if they're going to contract a virus that will disrupt their lives. Disrupted. Today we want to deal with what does God do with us during times that he disrupts us. When God permits disruption, what is, what is its purpose? In order to understand this text, in order to understand this text, this boy Samuel, we gotta know how he came into the world. You read first Samuel, he's the, he's the son of a man named Elkanah. His dad was Elkanah, his mother was Hannah. The thing about Hannah was that Hannah actually was barren and could not have children. Samuel was a child of promise. Hannah found herself in a state of distress, as the Bible calls it in 1 Samuel 1, a state of depression even. So much so that her husband had to encourage her and tell her not to get down. And one day she was crying outside of the temple. The man named Eli saw her. Eli, he saw her afar off, he saw her praying, he saw her weeping, and Eli thought she was drunk, and he told her, came and asked her rather why, why she was drunken. And she said, well, so I'm not drunk. I'm just in distress because I cannot give birth. And that day, the priest, the judge, Eli, he spoke, he spoke over her life, and he said, God is going to grant your petition. And then she worshiped the Lord with her husband. And then they knew each other or they laid with one another the next morning. And she conceived a boy. His name was Samuel. This is important for us in this day and age because, because Samuel is a child that was born in a season 
that his mother was supposed to remain barren. Some of you are sitting at home and decree and declare over your life prophetically that the anointing of Hannah shall hit your life. That what was supposed to be barren, God will give birth in a season that it looks like nothing's supposed to come forth. While the economy is breaking apart and it looks like nobody's supposed to come out wealthy, I decree through these airwaves that you do not come out of this state barren, but that you come out giving birth to something that was not supposed to come forth in this season. Some of you were not supposed to still be here. Some of you were not supposed to still make it. Some of you were not supposed to have a child that was COVID-19 free, but I decree that at the end of this pandemic, that you will not be There's an anointing, there's an anointing that's going to consume those that draw closer to God in this time. There is a favor that's going to consume those that draw closer to God in this time. You will not come out barren. Samuel, a child of promise. A child that, if, if I could suggest to you, wasn't supposed to be here by the plan and the devices of the enemy. But through God's plan, he overwrites her barren state of her womb and gives birth to a child of promise. Now watch the promise she makes. The promise she makes to God is that because you gave this child to me, I will give him back unto you for the services of of the kingdom, the service of the temple, the service of God. She says, if you give me this child, I'll give him right back to you. So here it is in 1 Samuel chapter 3. He's still a young boy, but he's not living with Elkanah. He's not living with Hannah. The Bible says he's staying with Eli. Because Eli is the priest, he's the judge at this time over the temple, and he is now being reared for the service of God in the temple. Can I help the parents that are viewing this? God said to tell you in this season, don't let your child get, get, get strained away from the service of God just because they're not coming into the church. I decree a Samuel anointing over your child, over your bloodline. Continue to wait up and pray with your children. Continue to wake up and let them get into the word. They may not understand everything because of their age, but God said, don't let the lack of a physical temple take you and your child away from the service of God. Watch this. The Bible says that the word of the Lord was rare in those days. And here it is that Samuel is still serving in the temple even though the word of the Lord is rare. There's a scarcity of ministry happening. Good God. There's a scarcity of prophetic words going forth. There is a lack of the amount of men and women that truly have God in their heart. Can I encourage you to not allow the scarcity of the amount of church that we're able to have stop your child from still being involved in ministry. Let them wake up. Let them serve with you. Let them pray with you. Let them bless their food. Teach them how to pray. Teach them how to read the scripture. Give them a scripture to remember. Write a prayer out. Tell them memorize a line every day. Don't let them get strained away from the service of, of the temple. Watch this. It says the word of the Lord was rare in those days. Why? Why was it rare? In order for us to understand why it was rare, we got to go back to Judges chapter 21, verse 25. In Judges 21 and 25, it lets us know there was no king at that time. That the people did according to their own will. Meaning they lacked because they started to depend on their own will. What does this mean? This means at that time, everyone was living under their own moral compass. 
In other words, what was right to me is right to me. And what's right to you is right to you. And we don't have to center ourselves around a God that has given us the way we should live. I know this sounds uh, this sounds antiquated. I know this sounds old school. But we've got to get back to a place uh, where we're believing the word of God. Uh, we cannot just do as we will. Uh, we cannot just function as we desire. We cannot just do whatever we want to do. We have to center ourselves around the compass that is true north towards the Father. In this time, the word of the Lord was rare, watch this, because they began to depend so heavily on themselves that they have now pushed out to divine instruction. Oh God, they began to depend so heavily on themselves that they have now ushered out divine instruction. And any time we live in a day where we get overly consumed with what we want to do, we now usher out what God was planning for us in order for us to make our lives better. We've got to understand that the word of the Lord was rare and yet Samuel is being called by God. The people that come out of this time of pandemic, this time of quarantining, this time of social distancing, this time of lack of money, this time of lack of social interaction, we have to realize that those that come out of this season on top are the ones that were willing to be called while it was rare. God, I wish y'all was here with me could, could slap somebody high five or, or say amen. Lord have mercy. It's those who are willing to do what is rare that God is about to call out and handpick. You've got to be willing to do the things that nobody is willing to do. I'm going to walk away from what everybody else is doing. I'm going to wake up while everybody's sleeping. I'm going to be up while everybody's resting. I'm going to be reading while everybody's scrolling. I'm going to do what is a rarity in order to obtain what is meant for me. Samuel was called during a time that the word of the Lord is rare. God, God only disrupts when he is grooming for a season to raise up a voice. Oh God, whenever God is about to raise up a voice, he disrupts the function of a whole nation. Jesus. Mm. In order for the people to really know who Elijah was and the power that he had, the Bible says that God had to shut up the clouds. In order for Israel to really understand the power of their new leader, Joshua, God had to cause the earth to stand still while they were battling. You've got to know that God will disrupt some stuff to call out a voice. While things seem out of whack, we can't focus on what's just happening according to our eyes. We got to say, Lord, what are you speaking to my ear? It says the word of the Lord was rare in those days and there was no frequent vision. It's not that miracles don't happen no more. It's not frequent because we depend on ourselves so much. It's not that God can't still heal the blind. It's just not frequent because we're so consumed with ourselves. It's not that God can't unplug deaf ears and get rid of cancer and cause the lame to walk. It's just not frequent because we are consumed with sin. The word of the Lord became rare because the people were overly dependent on self. Once you're led by your own gut, not the Holy Spirit. You have now told God you don't need him as much. So his visitation is less frequent. Mm. Your child, oh God, when your child is a baby, you be waking up at night every two hours when they first come home. You gotta visit the bassinet. You gotta, you gotta visit the crib. You gotta visit them frequently because.
because they're fully dependent on you. But as they start to learn to cook for themselves, start to learn to shop for themselves, start to learn to spend money for themselves and earn money on their own, guess what happens? You don't come by their bedside every two hours. Now you FaceTime them or you call them or you text them a couple times a week. The, the visitation is less frequent because the need is not as high. We have decreased our need for God and wonder why the visitation isn't as frequent. We got to be like children when it comes to the Father. Needing Him. Living, moving, and finding how we have our being. And the word of the Lord says, at that time, Eli, who's getting older, his eyesight had begun to grow dim so that he could not see. But I, I got to fast forward through this thing. Look at this. His eyesight is growing dim. But even though his eyesight is growing dim, when Samuel doesn't know who's calling him, the Bible says Eli is the one that's able to direct him that it's God that's calling him. Watch this. Eli has made some mistakes. If you read a little bit about his history, you see he allowed his sons to do some vile things. He allowed them to, to steal and tamper with offerings that were brought into the temple. He, 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 he allowed them to sleep with women unless they, and, and, and take women that did not belong to them or that were wives of other men. He permitted some things that he shouldn't have. However, even though he didn't have full control over what his sons did, he was still appointed by God. Ooh. And his sight might be going dim, but he still knew how to direct the young boy Samuel. Can I speak to my generation, my generation of preachers, my generation of leaders, my generation of ministers, my generation of pastors? Can I speak to you really quick? Leaders and entrepreneurs and business who are rising up in leadership. God sent to let you know, do not to underestimate the value of the people that came before you. Physically, their sight may be going dim. Their bodies may be growing weak. They may not be able to preach as long as you preach. They may not be able to run the business and stay up for the amount of hours that you do, but never underestimate the value of the shoulders of the person that came before you. Their sight might be going dim, but they're still around to help direct you. They're still around to help guide you. And I know our churches are losing so many pastors, so many leaders are falling into the hands of death, but they are being risen up into the hands of Christ Jesus our Lord. I need you to understand that when leaders are being moved, as Isaiah said, in the year that King Isaiah died, I too saw the Lord. That means there is a raising up of people who have shoes to fill, but never think because you have shoes to fill that the person that came before you has no value. You wouldn't be here if it wasn't for Eli Samuel. Understand, a lot of us wouldn't be here if it wasn't for our predecessors, if it wasn't for that pastor, that leader, that comforter. They might have made some mistakes, but I wouldn't be standing here if it wasn't for them. You gotta know they still have value. His sight might be going dim, but he still hears the Lord. <laughs> His body might be going weak, but he still hears the Lord. He might be getting older in age and can't hoop and backflip on the pulpit, but he still hears the Lord. Samuel, you wouldn't be here without direct the declaration of Eli. Ooh. So in spite of his mistakes, Samuel knows I still got to lean on the leader God gave me. And it says that the lamp of God had not yet gone out. And they were lying down in the temple. Samuel in his quarters. Eli in his quarters. And his quarters. And watch this. The Lord called Samuel. Here's what's interesting to me, y'all. In the first verse, it says that Samuel 
was ministering to the Lord under the presence or under the watch or tutelage of Eli. But yet, here it tells me the Lord calls him, but he does not know his voice. <laughs> watch this, watch this. It says in verse 7, Samuel did not yet know the Lord. And the word of the Lord had not yet been revealed to him. So here it is, he does not know the Lord. It hasn't been revealed to him because he's still young. But in verse 1, it says the boy Samuel is ministering to the Lord. <laughs> Can I help somebody that's been, getting, been doing the service of church a long time? And you feel like you haven't gotten to the place you need to be? God said, stay in that place. Continue to minister to me. Continue to pray unto me. Continue to worship and praise. Continue to lift me up. Eventually, you're going to hear my voice. Don't think because you haven't heard me yet that I'm not speaking to you. Because even though you've been in the church, you haven't heard me yet. Samuel, Samuel was ministering to the Lord. He's been serving in the temple, but he did not know the Lord. How many people have been coming to church? But you don't know the Lord. How, how many of you have been, have been coming to him, ministering, praise and worship, playing keys, playing drums, preaching on the pulpit, but you do not know the Lord? God said, continue to serve, continue to stay in that place of drawing nigh unto me. And eventually, you'll hear my voice. For 10 of you that are watching this broadcast, I want to encourage you that even though you have not heard God yet, it does not mean he's not speaking. He said, he's going to let you hear him. He's going to give you vision. He's going to give you direction. He's going to give you guidance. He's going to order your foot steps. I know you ain't hear them yet. And you've been singing every Sunday. I know you haven't heard them yet. You've been preaching every Sunday. I know you haven't heard them yet. You've been playing every week. God said I'm still still speaking. And don't count yourself out just because you have not heard me yet. Said you did not yet know the Lord. But he heard a voice. The voice he knew was the voice of his leader. And that's who he responded to. But eventually, he had to hear the voice of God for himself. Samuel was not working in the field when this took place. Let me help you. Samuel was not out tending to sheep in this type of place. Matter of fact, he was no longer even ministering to the Lord. It says he was lying down. He was in his quarters where he sleeps. In other words, in other words, God speaks to him while he's in his place of comfort. Ah, can I can I help you? God had to disrupt to some comfortable places in order for us to wake up and say, Lord, here I am. Speak to me. Lord, I know you took my job away. I know you allowed sickness to come. I know you allowed me to lose a loved one. Lord, I know you permitted me to stop coming into the church building. What was it all about? And God says, I'm waiting for you to say, here I am. says I want to disrupt a comfortable place because sometimes when we're lying in too much comfort we become too complacent complacency will never push us to the next level so to all the students I know you can't walk across the stage but can I let you know even if you're having class in a zoom room and your comfort is disrupted God still has a call on your life for those that have lost their job 
Over 27 million people in the last three weeks filing for unemployment. I know it seems like lack right now, but God said, I allowed you to be disrupted. Mm, for those that couldn't go to church, and you said that's where I was leading on for my strength and my source of peace. God said, I want you to know your source of peace is not in the building, but it's in your God. I had to disrupt you. I know for those that were getting dressed up, spending a few thousand dollars on prom dresses and gowns and tuxedos. I know you had some stuff disrupted, but God said, I am calling you to something greater, to every restaurant and boutique that had to shut down if you would grab this word of the Lord and say Lord whatever disruption you had to allow to bring my focus back unto you I allow it God disrupt the economy disrupt some stuff I know you had to leave me home with my husband for a little while longer maybe it was so our marriage could get stronger I know you had to cause me to homeschool my children. Maybe it was so that their education level could feel more compassionate and effective. Whatever God disrupted, every essential worker that has to go to work with the new things on their mind, God said you might have been disrupted, but I'm calling you to a place of purity. I'm calling you to a place of focus. I'm calling you to a place of diligence. I'm calling you to a place of stronger habits. I'm calling you to a place of freedom to the things that try to bind you. You might feel disrupted in your comfort. But look at how this disruption I was bringing the world together. <laughs> Look at how the disruption is actually causing the government to care about people who have nothing. their health and actually eat better. They think they're preventing a virus. No, you're preserving your life for your children and your children's children so you can run around with them, so you can go to their ball games, so you can leave some money in their college fund. You ain't just trying to beat a virus. Disruption has caused you to shift your focus on the things that were important. <laughs> Disrupted. Samuel was lying down in his quarters where he was asleep. A place he expected to be comfortable. A place, he, a place he expected to be soothing. Comfort of billions of dollars flowing through Wall Street. Comfort of thinking that we're the ones that's doing everything that causes the world to advance when really it's the grace and mercy of God that has been extended to us. Government, be careful of taking credit for improvement and advancement because if it had not been for the Lord on our side, we wouldn't even have the breath to breathe to flatten the curve of this disease. There's some beds we've been lying in. Beds of arrogance. Beds of pride. Beds of, of self-sufficiency. Beds of lack of prayer. Beds of selfishness where we don't care about each other. Beds of lack of love. Beds where we thought 401k or 403b was going to be the thing that keeps me rich the rest of my life. Beds where we thought our social security was going to be the thing that we depended and leaned on. And here it is. We're being called out of our rest. Sam. Sam.
New York. New York. New Jersey. New Jersey. California. California. Chicago. Chicago. Massachusetts. Massachusetts. America. America. Entrepreneur. Entrepreneur. Business owner. Business owner. Pastor. Pastor. Leader. Leader. Community activist. Community activist. God is calling you twice to disrupt your rest and tell you now is the time to refocus. Your focus. Disrupt it. You either embrace it or you reject it. But the glory of the Lord is going to go forth either way. I close this message and through this broadcast I say to you, uncomfortable as disruption may be to get woken out of your complacency and your laziness and your sleep to get woken out of your dependence on your job or on your finance to get woken out of depending on your degree to change everything I submit to you that if you embrace this disruption You will be one of the chosen voices of the next generation. Embrace the call that you hear. And say, Lord, here I am. For your servant hears. Let me pray with you, Heavenly Father. Every single person viewing this broadcast. Every single person that has shared this broadcast. Every single person commenting, every single person that's at their bedside weeping right now, every single person that's at their dining table with tears rolling down their eyes, every single person that's watching from a hospital bed or, or a nursing home, God, I pray that your voice continues to call me. Speak to those who don't mind hearing your voice during a time when it's rare. Speak to those who don't mind your visitation during a time where your visitation is infrequent. Speak to those that you're calling out in this season to rise above the circumstances that they were once in. Draw out your Samuels, oh God. Your Moseses. Your Davids. these tough times. We pray that if there's anyone viewing this broadcast that does not know you as their personal Lord and Savior, touch their heart. That they may know you in the pardoning of their sins. That they may believe that you sent your son Jesus Christ who is the bodily expression of you, God the Father. Who entered into the holy place once having obtained eternal redemption for everyone here. I pray that those that lost their jobs, God, that you said more than just a stimulus check, that you do more than just unemployment, but Lord, find a well, help them dig a well that will bless them generation after generation in the midst of this barren season. I speak birth in the name of Jesus, spiritual birth to fresh anointing, spiritual birth to fresh guidance, spiritual birth to new wisdom, new networks, new relationship in the name of Jesus. That parents draw closer to their children. That husbands draw closer to their wives. That hearts be drawn closer to one another as we care for the needy, for the widows, for the orphans. In the name of Jesus. Touch every essential worker that's viewing right now. 
people working in food industries, people working in medical industries, people working in emergency response industries. We decree and declare protection in the name of Jesus. Dispatch angels around their lives. Dispatch angels in their offices, in their cop squadron cars, in their EMTs, in their ambulance trucks, God. Dispatch angels in their kitchens as they continue to provide service for us to function every cash register employee God we pray against viral contact we come against disease touching them every essential worker viewing this broadcast every government official still called to the service every pastor still preaching from their offices from their homes from their pulpits with empty pews touched it touch the voices that in spite of its rarity that it will never be wiped out in the name of Jesus. We pray now for these people and pray over their lives and their ministries. In Jesus' name, amen. We thank y'all for tuning in. We pray that this word bless you. Disrupt it. Embrace the disruption. And watch what God does for your life. Watch how he shifts your heart and your focus. If you want to sow seed, it's already pinned. In the comments, it's already pinned across the screen. Feel free to join us and put seed in the ground that we can continue to do the service that God has called us to do, to care for the needy, that there may be meat in his house, to care for those who are disenfranchised. Join with us. Partner with us. The word of God says that Isaac sold seed, not while he was rich, but it says he sold in a time of famine. So, in this famine, in this drought, in this pandemic, partner with us so that we can continue to do the work of the Lord. God bless you. We love you. And we'll see you next week. Peace.